Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some baseball bags. Uh, so Clone Trooper Warthog Jr. is a baseball player. He's uh, currently, as of 2022, he's 13 years old. Just turned 12 a few months ago. I'm sorry, just turned 13 a few months ago. Um, he does play on a 14U travel select um, comp team, what do you want to call it, travel ball. Um, he is a catcher as well, among other positions. Uh, and so, as a catcher, he has to have a catcher's bag for all of his gear. And so we've gone through a number of them over the years. Uh, I wanted to do a comparison today real quick of a couple of the most recent bags he's had. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, as he sort of evolved over, over time and, and gotten more and more gear, he's had to get bigger and bigger bags. So today we're going to do a quick comparison of the Boomba Beast bag which is right here. And then the no errors um, uh, E2 bag over here. Um, E2 meaning catcher, right? Catcher's position is, is the two position. Um, so first I'm gonna look at this real quick. He, he's not currently using this bag anymore. He's used this for the last year or so. Um, and uh, it's been pretty good, but it's, it's been a little bit tight on, on real estate. Initially he had all of his gear well, let me go through exterior, um, interior pockets, and then a little few comments on, on our overall thoughts. Um, so the Boomba is a good bag though. He's been using these you know, in one form or another since doing All-Stars when he was in still playing rec ball. Um, in All-Stars, they, our particular youth baseball league issued the All-Star team's Boomba bags, either catcher's bag or a, um, a roller backpack type bag. Um, and, uh, um, those were pretty nice, especially at that age. Um, and then he's kind of stayed with Boomba up until just last year or this year, actually. Uh, again, this is the beast, uh, catcher's bag, rolling catcher's bag. So I'll start sort of top to bottom, you know, got a pull loop here so you can kind of pull the bag along. Um, we've got an upper compartment here. Uh, and this is where he kept his gloves. Uh, both his infielder's glove and his catcher's mitt. Um, this actually panel rips off, it's Velcroed on so that you can custom embroider it. Um, this is embroidered with his, his, one of his previous travel teams, his name and his number, etc. cetera. Um, then moving down, you've got obviously uh, handles here. You can Velcro them together so you can hold them together. Got a top pocket on the outside here. And it's felt lined, so you can put things like sunglasses or, you know, phones. You know, he would keep his cell phone in here, um, other small and sundry items. Um, in here, this is just an open mesh bag. It's breathable, obviously, so things that, you know, uh, you want, you know, that are maybe wet or that you want to, you know, not put inside the main bag. Um, but it's small. It's very flat. So he would keep his batting gloves in here. Um, Let's see, and then the main compartment, which opens up here. And you can see it's not a huge opening. Um, initially, he started carrying his, uh, he would fold up his shin guards, stuff them at the bottom, and then he'd have his chest protector here, and he'd have both his mask and his helmet. As he got bigger and, you know, his head got bigger and he got bigger helmets and stuff and gear, um, that didn't all fit in here anymore. So then he had to, uh, start putting his shin guards in the side box compartments here. So he'd put one in each compartment. Which obviously left a little room for other things. He'd also put his water in here. There's a little zipper compartment in here for some things, you know, a towel, um, spare balls, baseballs. You should always have spare baseballs. Another little compartment here. You know, you can put cliff bars, um, he would throw water bottles just loose in here, uh, as well as the shin guards. It also has elastic, not a lot, uh, is it elastic? Well, anyway, it's, it's a strap, a keeper strap for baseball bats. And then at the bottom, you can see there's two pockets here. Uh, he would, you could throw two bats on either side, two baseball bats. He never put his bats in here though. Then you've got two hooks here. So you can hook these to chain link fence you can, and then stand it up if you wanted to access it like almost like a locker. 
So, you know, pretty nice uh, arrangement, nice organization. And then finally, in the bottom here, you've got a compartment mesh opening for uh, cleats. Um, uh, up until 13U, obviously, he was using rubber cleats, and those were fine. Turf shoes, you could, you could really only get one. You, know, you could get two pairs in here, but the problem is it invades on the main compartment space. And so, with my hand. <laughs> so really, one pair of shoes was it. And when he initially had all his catcher's gear in here, he wouldn't be able to get any of his shoes in here. Um, there is also a zippered com uh, compartment in here, it, like opens up into the main compartment if you want to open it up. So that's pretty cool. Oops, let's see if I can zip it back up. Uh, and then, you know, again, as he got bigger in his gear, his gear got bigger, he started putting his shin guards in the sides here, like I said. And that left not too much room for other things, but let me flip it over here. So here's the bottom. It's just a kind of a stiffened bottom. There are no rails here or anything, but it, it hasn't it hadn't had a problem with it. Nice wheels for dragging over grass or any other kinds of terrain. Um, uh, you know, stiffener down here, all the way up. Uh, you can see it's kind of abraded here where he's dragged it. Uh, this is this bag probably lasted a season and a half. Uh, so it's perfectly usable still. I mean, he could go another two, one, maybe two seasons with it. But again, it, it, it was getting too small for him. Uh, and then finally in the back here, there's another compartment. Zipper's open. And it's a padded compartment in here. And you can put bats in here. I think it'll hold three, maybe three bats. Um, so this is where he put his bats. He didn't put them on the side compartment. So again, good bag. Um, was great for what he needed at the time. Um, durability wise, I mean, the materials are really good. The construction is really good. Um, I would call this maybe sort of a mid, mid tier bag. Uh, you know, then you can get into some of the cheaper offerings, some of the more commodity stuff like, you know, some of the lower end. Easton or Rawling stuff that's out there, and those are fine, um, especially if you're just playing Little League or Rec Ball. Uh, once you start getting a travel ball and you're going to a tournament every weekend, this is probably about the lower, lowest end of the spectrum that you want to be on in terms of durability. That'll take that day in, day out beating, you know, going to, you know, five, six games a weekend, you know, spending all day dragging it around on Saturday and Sunday or whatever. Um, week in, week out, plus practices. Um, uh, you know, on, on the particular team he's on now, they they do multiple. Well, he's got multiple practices a, a week, plus either scrimmages or tournaments on the weekends. And so it's it's uh, almost. Plus he does some um, uh, some uh, uh, additional training on his own. Uh, he goes to you know hitting uh, with a local coach here. Um, uh, sometimes throwing and, and catching practice as well, as well as a conditioning class that he does in the mornings before school. Um, he is currently an eighth grader, so he goes to a conditioning class Tuesdays and Thursdays every week at 5.30 a.m. And then he comes home after that, showers, and goes to school. <laughs> so busy schedule, um, but you know he's putting in the work. He really loves it, really proud of him. Um, he's still maintaining straight A's. He's an all honor student. So we're really proud of him that he's able to balance his athletic life and his academic life. Um, if it, if it, if he weren't able to maintain this, his grades, this would have to take a, a back seat, obviously, but he's been able to do that. So he's been able, you know, he's been able to, uh, to continue to do baseball at the, at the tempo that he's doing it. And we support him by, you know, paying for his gear and, and paying for his, his tra travel team dues and practices and stuff. So, um, so all that to say that this is a semi-serious bag. I, I would say it's a serious bag, but it's kind of on the low end of serious. Um, it'll last probably for under normal travel ball use, probably two seasons uh, is what you can expect. Maybe three if you, if you kind of take care of the gear. Um, he's pretty respectful about his gear, but even so you can see it's got, you know, stains and scuffs and it's scraped up and wearing through here and you know, all this kind of stuff. So, um, if somebody's really hard on their gear or has a lot of gear that they're stuffing in and out, uh, 
then you might want to move up to something like this. Uh, another good one is the Bonet Commander. That's a good bag some of his buddies have. Um, that one's a little big for our tastes, but it has some positives as well. But we're not talking about that bag, we're just talking about these two. So I'm gonna <clears throat> go ahead and uh, get this out of here. And I'm gonna take a closer look at this. This is the, the it's made by a company called No Errors. It's their, what they call their E2 bag. Uh, and it is uh, super heavy duty. This is, this is, I think, in our opinion, the best bag out there, um, closely followed by the Bonet bag. Um, we're gonna look at the, uh, again, exterior, interior, and then some thoughts, right, sort of pros and cons. So I guess uh, in this case, I'll start at the bottom here. Uh, so you've got pretty good main compartment, and, and it is heavy duty, right? Same as the is a Boomba, but I would say a, a notch up in terms of materials and construction. <clears throat> so this is the gear he's got in it now. His batting helmet, uh, his chest protector. He's got his mask here in the middle. And you can see there's a shelf, oops. There's a shelf here that's held in place by Velcro and, and snaps, as you can see. So it's pretty, it's, it's a stiff shelf and it's in there pretty, it's not going anywhere. You can, undo the snaps and the Velcro and just lay it flat. You can't take it out all the way, but you can lay it flat. So if you want just a big opening here, that's possible. Um, he's also got, there's also some mesh, again, zippered compartments here for, uh, you know, gear that you might want to air out a little bit. So this is his batting gloves and he's got a wrist, wrist, a little wrist brace here, wrist protector. So when he's blocking baseballs behind the dish, you know, this, he gets a lot of injuries on his arms because he's, you know, he's blocking and, and uh, so this helps. Um, that's the main compartment. And then in the top compartment is where he keeps his gloves, mitts. So he's currently got his, you know, fielding glove. Um, we always store them with a ball in them, in this case a softball. And he's got his, he's got two mitts. He's got his old catcher's mitt as a backup and his, his current one, which I'm, I'm not gonna pull out, but. <clears throat> um, and then you have a couple of zippers here, and these are actually hooks. There's four of them, two on each side. And these are kind of cool, like if you wanna, if you've got this thing propped up in its sort of locker configuration, and I'll show you that, you can, it has hooks on the back here so that you can hang it, not hang it, but you know, prop it up to a, uh, a chain link fence and leave it there in a vertical position. And then you can do things like you can hang your mask, hang your helmets, hang your, your gloves, whatever, so that they're kind of quick and easy to get to. He doesn't really use that much. He just lays his bag down on the ground for the most part. So then you have two side openings here. <laughs> you can see he's got stuff in here from previous weekend. So you got water, he's got some balls. He's got a little first aid kit that he keeps, um, you know, where he's got some lidocaine, <laughs> um, some bandages, some tape, wrap, um, gauze, you know, you know, some athletic tape, um, pre-wrap, all that kind of stuff. Lots of Advil. Uh, catchers are definitely a different breed and a different mentality. Um, and they get, they get abused on a daily basis, <laughs> uh, you know. And so it takes, a, I think, a certain kind of mentality to, to actually be a catcher and to stay with it. A lot of his, his buddies on his team are, well, not a lot, but there's a number of them who are former catchers. And uh, once, once it got a little more serious and kids started throwing at higher velocities and they were having to actually block baseballs instead of, you know, as a little kid in rec ball, you're, you're picking them or you're just, they're just going by you, it doesn't matter, right? Um, once they started having to get in front of those things and keep them in front and block them with their bodies, you know, use their, their protective gear, a lot of them, you know, literally have like kind of PTSD, if you want to call it that, from getting hit so much by baseballs at high velocity and they don't stay with it. Um, so he's got a little towel in here that he uses. Uh, he actually also used to be a pitcher um, and so this was sort of one of those, you know, you do the towel drill to get your, your throwing motion. So he keeps that around just, just, just to have in case, you know, he wants to work on that. Um, I'm gonna leave these out. <laughs> and then this compartment down here is actually for cleats. 
and it's a hardened and protected compartment. So in here, he's got his rubbers right now. Um, as a 14U player, they also are required to wear metal cleats. Uh, his medals, though, he usually holds in his hand so he can, you know, so he'll wear his, his sliders to the field so he doesn't damage his, his spikes. And then when he gets there, he'll put on his medals. And then uh, these are just in case, right? Because they play on a lot of fields that are also turf or that are half turf. And sometimes they don't know until they get there. So, you know, it's sort of that whole Boy Scout thing, always be prepared. So we tell them, keep those. Now, you can prob as a smaller kid, you can probably get two pairs of cleats in here. But, you know, as a bigger kid with bigger shoes, not really. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you really stuffed it, but. Um, nice little tag here. You can put their name and their player and their number. Uh, he hasn't done that yet. <clears throat> and then over here, sort of the last piece on the front here, there is, is this long compartment. Hold on. Um, let's see if I can. And this is where he keeps his shin guards. Now, there also is an internal strap here. And you can thread it through. Sometimes when he's you know, at the end of a game, he's tired and he just wants to put his gear away. But if you, can, if you do that and kind of it's got a Velcro and it tightens it down, that helps sort of load control, kind of keeps it from swaying around too much and it kind of compresses it a little bit. So, um, you know, pretty nice feature. So that's, I think that's all his gear. And then in the back here, similar to the, the Boomba bag, you've got a compartment for bats, right? So, you know, is Woody and anyway. And then also back here, You've got stiffening rails for support. It's also got a, a stiff bottom like the other, the Boomba bag. And then built into it, I don't know if you can see it, these, these things are shaped like hooks. And these actually are where you hook it onto a chain link fence and stand it up in a vertical position so you can get into this thing like a locker. Um, finally, the wheels. These are really nice, you know, rubber, they call fat boy wheels, I guess. I don't know if that's the end of the company they source them from, but super wide. Um, really nice for pulling over all kinds of terrain, even better than the ones on the Boomba bag. The only downside is they're narrow relative to the bag. I mean, you can kind of see um, how wide the bag is versus actually, I don't think you can see the wheels. Let me bring this back over. So again, here are the fat boy wheels. Nice tread, nice rubber, really wide, wider than any wheel I've seen on a bat bag or, or a suitcase for that matter. I mean, truly like all terrain. <laughs> tires for, for bags, um, but they're a little narrow compared to the rest of the bag. And so, so that kind of is a segue into sort of the, the pros and cons or, or sort of final thoughts about the bag. Um, oh, here's some mesh here, by the way, you can see some breathable mesh. It's heavy duty. It's, it's like, um, almost like a vinyl material. It's not, it's not like cloth mesh or whatever. It's super tough. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, sort of the, the, the organization is great on this bag. The way everything's got its place and it's built for adult size people. Um, you can fit, you know, full size gear in here. You can fit all of it if you play multiple positions. You know, you got your batting helmet, you get a multiple gloves. Um, again, he's got a, an infielder's glove, a backup catcher's mitt, and his, his primary catcher's mitt. Uh, and, and it all fits in here, plus room for extras like his first aid kit, his water bottles. He'll throw cliff bars in here, whatever. Um, and, and that's great. The only problem is, and, and it's relatively compact lengthwise, right? If you look at the bonnet, that thing is gigantic. I mean, we used to joke that you could fit a dead body inside one of those. Um, it, it is a huge bag, but it's not as wide as this one. So what this with the no errors bag, they essentially traded length for width, right? And unfortunately, the width makes it a little bit unstable side to side when you're rolling it, right? So if he hits a, a, an incline or a side of a hill, uh, you know, a bump or a bad rock or something, it can, it can, it can cause it to kind of lean to the side and get off of one wheel. That is the one downside to this bag. Um, other than that, it's, you know, super heavy duty, the best organization you've seen in any bag, um, and uh, really easy to use, and lots of room for everything. Uh, so that's sort of impressions on the, on the no errors E2, um, or I should say no E2, no errors for the catcher's position, right? <laughs> uh, 
so that's it, sort of comparison between this and the Boomba. This is what I would call sort of a tier one type of bag, or, or you, know, the, you know, whereas the Boomba is maybe a tier two. Um, uh, it, it, is, it is at the top, you know, this and the, and the Bonnet Commander are probably best you can get. Um, it's gonna last, I mean, this is the first one we've had, and we've only got it a few months ago, but uh, it, it looks almost brand new still. Um, and it's, uh, I'm anticipating, and from what I've read, it, it'll last, you know, two seasons, maybe more, depending on how he takes care of it. So, um, so aside from the sort of the tipping issue, um, that is it. So, uh, apologize for the phone. Should have turned that off. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate the time, and we will catch you in the next one.